Hello and welcome to Main Street United Methodist Church's online worship service. The service is for February 7th, first Sunday in February. And I just have uh, just really only one announcement, and that is I'm asking everyone to join me in prayer, uh, regular prayer time every Sunday. Uh, the idea is for everyone to be praying in their homes at the same time. And so I'm asking for us all to be in prayer at 6 a.m., at noon, at 6 p.m., and at midnight. Now, I have been told by some that they are not getting up <laughs> to be there and to pray at 6 a.m. And I said, that's okay, just pray when you get up, and that'll be fine. And uh, I've also been told that I will not be, uh, by some, I will not be up at midnight praying, and so that's fine too. Uh, but... Uh, we have these prayer times so as many of us as can to be in prayer. Do y'all know of any other announcements we should lift up? That's true. The, the, uh, here on February the 7th, um, it is the first Sunday of the month, and so that we will have a, a Zoom communion service uh, at noon here at the church. So. Um, that Zoom information is, uh, is in the East Spire. It's, and so uh, that if, and if, you, if you do not have the login and ID, please send me, well, uh, text me, and I will send that to you. Uh, and we are going to have a live Zoom communion service Sunday at noon. Okay. Y'all ready to worship? Please lead us. Let us pray. Oh, Lord God. Lord, you know we love you. And I thank you for an opportunity to praise and worship you right now. Lord, sometimes the cares and concerns of this world just distract us from you. But this time, at this time, we want to focus on you, Lord. So drive out the doubt and the fear and let us just adore you and praise you right now, Lord. Pour out your Holy Spirit into this place and into the homes of everyone who worships with us. Lord, I pray that you would grab us in our spirits and lift our spirits to you. Amen. Let us all join in our hymn of praise, number 261, Lord of the Dance. Lord of 
of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced for the scribe and the Pharisee, but they would not dance, and they would not follow me. I danced for the fishermen, for James and John, they came to the dance went on. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be. I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced on the Sabbath when I cured the lame, the holy said it was a shame. They ripped and they stripped and they hopped me high. They left me there on the cross to die. Friends, then, wherever you may be, I am the Lord of the dance and me, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance and me. I danced on a Friday and the sky turned black. It's hard to dance with the devil on your back. They buried my body and they thought I'd gone. But I am the dance and I still go on. Dance man, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. Affirmation of Faith is number 881 in the back of the hymnal. And this is the Apostles' Creed, our traditional version. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Amen. Our gospel lesson is from the Gospel of Mark. It is Mark chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. Let us pray. Oh, holy Lord, I thank you for inspiring Mark to write down this account of what happened to Jesus early in his ministry. I thank you for writing down his words and his actions so that we may all learn a little more about Jesus. Lord, open our minds to understanding this scripture and may the meditation of our hearts and the words of our lips always be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. And he answered, Well, let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I have come out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Last week, we saw Jesus teaching in the synagogue, astounding the people with his teaching because he was teaching with authority and we saw him casting out an unclean spirit there in the synagogue our verses this morning uh, pick up right where last week's scriptures left off and jesus left the synagogue as soon as they left the synagogue uh, james john simon and andrew and jesus all went to simon and andrew's home now in the future Jesus would give Simon a new name. Do you all know what Simon's new name was going to be? Peter, you got it. Okay, that's right. There was a quiz for the day. You all didn't know you were going to get a quiz, did you? Well, when uh, Simon and Andrew left the synagogue, they took Jesus home with them. Wow. Just think about that. When... Simon and Andrew left the synagogue. They took Jesus home with them. Well, guess what? Every one of you who are worshiping with us online has taken Jesus home with you. Hallelujah! <laughs> How about that? Well, verse 30 tells us that Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever. And they told Jesus about it right away. Now, back in that day... Uh, Fevers were very dangerous. To, to have a fever was life-threatening. Um, you know, a fever that we probably wouldn't worry about too much today unless we got tested and found out it was coronavirus, but um, we have modern medicine today to take care of a fever. There are things that we can take to lower a fever that they did not have back in Jesus' day. Something that we would consider minor, a minor thing today, it might have been a major medical issue in Jesus' day. And if someone was coming to your home there in that first century and the lady of the house was sick with a fever, you would be very concerned. 
and it would be important to warn Jesus right away. Well, you know, just like today, in the middle of this pandemic, if there's somebody at my house who's sick with the fever um, and, and they wanted to come by my house, the first thing I would do is what? I would warn them. I would say, look, please don't come. I've got so-and-so in the house and they're sick with the fever, right? Well, it was the same back in Jesus' day. That is the possibility if someone had a fever that they were contagious. And it was dangerous to go into someone's home that had a fever. Secondly, you know, it was the responsibility of the lady of the house to provide hospitality. So if the lady of the house were sick, Simon and Andrew would say, you're probably going to get a cold supper tonight because <laughs> the lady of the house, my mother-in-law, is ill. So that perhaps they, they wanted Jesus to know that, that was the hospitality would be a bit lacking. But it was also the Sabbath. And the Jews considered someone who was sick to be unclean. And you know, so, so that was a, another thing to warn Jesus about. Uh, even if it was a minor illness, a Jew would not go into that home thinking they might become unclean there on the Sabbath. Well, I, I wonder if Simon and Andrew were warning Jesus, thinking that if he knew there was a woman sick in a house, that, that he would not come because he wouldn't want to get sick. He would avoid that. They didn't know Jesus very well yet. This was brand new in Jesus' ministry. He had just called them, for goodness sake. Well, Simon and Andrew, uh, they did not ask Jesus to heal Simon's mother-in-law. They warned him that she was there, sick with a fever. So we all know what Jesus did, because I just read the scripture, right? He went to their home. He came, and he, he went immediately to Simon's sick mother-in-law. He took her by the hand touched her, lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she immediately got up and began to serve. Wow. Jesus took her by the hand. That was unheard of for a Jew to touch an unclean person on the Sabbath. He lifted her up. And I imagine that she was not only bodily lifted up, and, but, and not only lifted up as in healed from her sickness, but also he lifted her spirits as well. The fever left her. Jesus healed her. She was no longer unclean. Then she began to serve her guests. And I'll bet, that the hospitality Jesus enjoyed that day was the best to be had. And word got around quickly. Did you hear? Simon's mother-in-law was sick and Jesus just, just healed her and the fever went away. I imagine it went around through the town uh, rather quickly. You know, the, the grapevine is faster than the speed of light. Jesus healed Simon's mother-in-law. And by that evening, the whole city was gathered there at the house, crowding around, and they brought to Jesus all who were sick or possessed with demons. And he cured many, many people, various diseases, and cast out many demons. Very busy night. Very busy night. The next morning, uh, Jesus went off alone to a desert, deserted place to pray. Now, um, I am an extrovert, so I, I don't always get what going off alone means. You know, let's all go off alone together. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's sort of my idea. But uh, my lovely wife is an introvert. And so I have learned that when she says she needs to go off alone uh, to a deserted place to pray, I may not have to understand it. I just have to accept it, that that is something that she needs. And apparently Jesus needed to get away from all that hustle and bustle and crowding of this crowd and all these sick people. And 
Um, I imagine it was rather exhausting for him, and so he needed to get away to pray. And I'll bet he was doing some soul searching, thinking about his mission and his ministry, because it was just starting. And before taking the next step in his ministry, he needed to speak with God the Father. Now, verses 35 through 39 read, In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up, went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. And when they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Well, let us go to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For this is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. Simon and Andrew took Jesus home. They warned Jesus about Simon's mother-in-law. Jesus took her by the hand, lifted her up. The fever left her, and then she began to serve him. Then Jesus helped all the people who were brought to him that evening. And early the next morning, he went alone to pray and discern, perhaps, the next step of his ministry. Wow. So here we are. We are gathered here in this place, and many people are gathered in their homes, worshiping God on our Sabbath, And I know in the midst of this pandemic, not many of us have everything together. Temptation to sin is a daily struggle. Our bodies are are, uh, aging and getting older, and we don't heal as quickly as we used to. We struggle to to stay healthy. I know I struggle with, uh, with body weight. I struggle to lose weight. I'm sure all of us, our hearts have been broken at one time or another, and this continuing pandemic tries to, it tries to pull my spirit down, and all the grief and loss and illness, I've got to say, it gets to me, and sometimes I just feel all of that weighing my spirit down. So whenever you hear me pray, Lord, lift our spirits, I mean it, you know, I really mean it. Jesus loves us. Jesus Christ loves us. He wants to take us by the hand. He wants to lift us up and lift our spirits, heal us of all the fear and doubt and worry that we have in our lives today so that we can better serve him in this community and in this world. So when this service is over, Let's all remember Jesus remains in our homes. Jesus Christ is with us. He is as close to us as a breath. And Jesus wants to heal us of all of our feverish problems. And he'll take us by the hand and he'll lift us up. And that fever will leave us. Ah, uh, we may still have problems. I think as long as I'm alive here on this earth, there's going to be problems that I deal with. I think it's the same for all of us. But Jesus will give us the heart and the strength and the peace to withstand and overcome everything this world throws at us. And after Jesus takes us by the hand and he lifts us up, it's time for us to turn around and serve him. And we serve Jesus by serving others, particularly in their times of need. Jesus invites you to be lifted up, healed, and sent out to serve him. I think it might be time we all found a quiet place to be alone with Jesus, to pray, do some soul searching, to pray for God's direction and guidance. Lord, what are the next steps in my ministry here in Waynesboro? See, God has a mission and a ministry for us 
in this church and in this community. And oftentimes, we ask God to bless the ministries that we want to do. We come up with these ideas and we get, oh, let's do this ministry, let's do that ministry. And then we'll pray, Lord, uh, bless this ministry. And I think it might be a little backwards. Instead of asking God to bless the ministries we want to do, let's pray God will show us the ministries that God is going to bless. You know, because God's got a plan. He's got work for us to do, something he's going to bless. And I want to do God's will. And it, God is going to bless the ministries that follow God's will. And really, that's the direction for us to go in. Whenever we see God working in a mission or a ministry, that is our invitation to join in that work healed and serving. Praise be to God. I wonder if we might sing, if y'all would come forward and let us sing our hymn of fellowship, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. I'd like to thank everyone for continuing to give your tithes and offerings. And I'd like to say a prayer over all the tithes and offerings that we have received in this last week. Let us pray. Dear Lord, Lord, I ask that you would bless all these gifts, the tithes and offerings we have received over the previous week. I pray that you would bless the gifts and bless the givers. Lord, we know that you created this entire world, this entire universe, and you have given each of us stewardship over a small portion of your creation. Lord, teach us how to take better care of what you've given us. Teach us how to learn and grow and build your kingdom. Amen.
Lord Jesus. We call you our comforter and we call you our healer. And Lord, you know that uh, we are in the midst of a pandemic and your people need your healing touch. I thank you for all the knowledge and skill you've given the researchers and the pharmaceutical companies and the doctors and the nurses as they are seeking a cure. I thank you for leading them in the right paths to develop a vaccine. Lord, let those doctors and nurses be your instruments of healing that deliver us from this pandemic. I pray you would open our eyes to seeing you working around us everywhere. Lord, even though this, uh, this coronavirus is grabbing our attention, all the other illnesses are still there, and people are still suffering from heart disease and cancer and flu. People are still being injured and and having to go, have surgery. and Lord, I pray that you would pour out your healing on all your people. Wherever there is sickness, provide a cure. Wherever there is cancer, I pray you would give them a miraculous healing today. For anyone who is in pain, Lord, I pray relief of that pain. And for all who doubt, give them hope. Pour out your peace deep into the hearts and souls and minds of all your people. Thank you for being with us, Lord. Now let us all pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now let's sing hymn number 569, We've a Story to Tell to the Nations.
Now may our Lord and Savior bless each and every one of you with health and strength and knowledge of His will. God bless you all. Amen.